Okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming of yes. chapter 19. So we're on 19, oops, this says 19.2, I should say 19.3. Adam, oh, sorry, Ivelis Adam, Tisalif Darko, the Al Hashem Yizak Libo. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah, <laughs> do you know where you've seen it? I can guess where you've seen it. No, did we do it? I don't think so. Ivelis Adam, did we see it in Dominic somewhere? Oh, uh, it does show up, it, but not in regular dominating, I don't think. No, in like... It, in like Yom and Orion or something? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, where does it show up there? I'll have to look there. I was going to guess that you might have gotten it from the Morn of uh, uh, If yes. you've read anything that the Ram has written about, like, evil, yeah, uh, he quotes it there, and uh, we might actually want to take a look at that at some point. Maybe, right. Yeah. I feel like I've heard Rabbi say Yes. Maybe. Yeah, I hear it in his <laughs> voice also. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. So, what does it mean? Um, yeah. So, the, uh, the, the uh, evilness or the sin. No. If it, like foolishness. Yeah, foolishness. Foolishness of man. So, uh, twists his path. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, the foolishness of man, uh, let's say, twists his path or his way. Uh, the Al Hashem Yizaf Libo. And to Hashem, or like, yeah, the all is definitely going to have to not be on, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to go with against, and we'll see if that works out. Yeah, I would say like on the subject of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I think that's one step too far removed. I think it's actually about Hashem. Uh, I think he's actually Yizaf Libo at Hashem, not just the subject of Hashem. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, Yizaf. I, I meant like directed towards. Oh, like, okay. Fine. Yeah. Not subject as in topic. You mean subject as in opposed to object? Or no, actually object would be the object of Hashem, yeah. So if you look at Matsuda's Sion, uh, he says, so first by to Salif, uh, he says to Akim, Kamovi Salif Ba. Uh, so to uh, distort or pervert or to a twist is fine, like you said. And then Yizaf uh, is Yichas, is um, to get angry, right? So I like translating it, and maybe this is just because this is the first translation I saw, and uh, his heart rages against Hashem. Uh, and I might also be tempted to translate that way because I'm pretty sure, I don't know if this is true. Actually, I'm going to look on all Torah in a second, but um, I think Za'af might be a word used for storms also. I feel like that's in my head somewhere. Um, okay, but in terms of speaking of Al Torah, um, I clicked on the word salaf, and it says to twist, pervert, or, or overturn. Um, and uh, and then let me click on. Yeah, it actually shows up in um, in Torah, and it means the same thing. Yeah, I mean, are you thinking of the salaf divrei tarikim? Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's in two places in Torah, right? That's in uh, Yisro and in Vaes. Uh, and in uh, Dvarim. Shoftim. Dvarim. Shoftim. Shoftim? Okay. Yep. I know because um, it's my Burman's Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, Za'af is to be <laughs> to be out of humor, which I think is not a <laughs> typical <laughs> use. Vexed or enraged. Uh, and Aramaic Za'af is to rage against. Ah, to storm. There you go. Nice. Za'afa is to storm, uh, is, is a storm. Yeah, so it comes from blowing. So like, I guess, hopping and puffing type uh, right. imagery. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so then, just go with our other translations here. So we have Sadi Gaon. Looks like the only thing he modifies is Darko. He says is Drachav. Okay, his ways. All right, which uh, don't know how much of a difference that's going to make. Um, and the Targum says Shat Yusa de Barnasha, Metaltala or Chase. Now that's interesting because I would think Metaltala means it moves, right? Like Metaltalin. Yeah. Um, let me just, I should have checked the Jastro ahead of time. Let me just look it up in the Jastro now. Um, Jastro. And should you say just means stuff? Yeah, I think it's like Stuss. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he if he consistently uses that word for Evels, but I'm going to assume he does because it's a pretty uh, pretty generic word. Metata, I could also think might mean to make wander, but I don't know if that's, uh, if I'm imagining that. All right, let's see. Metata. Uh, yeah, exile. Metaltala is uh, metaltala is exile or homeless. Uh, it also means uh, chattel or movable goods. Oh, so that's interesting then, right? So, uh, to Salif Darko, metaltala or chase. 
Yeah, that's interesting. So it, uh, um, so let's see, the foolishness of a, of a person um, moves his path, I guess, is how you would say, mm-hmm. and against uh, God, his heart complains. Mm-hmm. Okay, so not, not rages, a slightly less, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, intense term. And then we have in our English translations, uh, our school says, a man's foolishness corrupts his way and his heart rages against Hashem. Living not, a man's foolishness perverts his way and causes his heart to become angry at God. Alter, a man's folly perverts his way and his heart rages against the Lord. So I don't think there's anything so noteworthy there. Yeah, okay, so what are our questions? Hmm. Um, why are we even mentioning God here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what does Hashem have to do with this? Yeah, um, and I guess the more pointed way within the Pasuk to ask that is why does his heart rage against Hashem? Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't know if that's the same question or different questions, but uh, right. presumably if, the, if, the, if that's the phenomenon it's pointing out, then it would make sense that the Pasuk is talking about it. So I think we have to start with the phenomenon. Sure. It's something that I find difficult about this Pasuk. Yeah. Not a question, but um, is... It seems incredibly general, um, and so I, I, fe- I feel like I'm, I'm going to have a hard time coming up with something that's not speculation and yeah. um, and also not overly narrow. Yeah, yep. That's, uh, that's the, the path. Just don't get angry at God when you fail to come up with an idea. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could just say like this is all of Mishlei, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And in fact, the Ramam uh, does take this pretty generally. And I do think that this is going to be something, uh, a quality of uh, Ivelis in general, which makes me wonder also, wh- why does it say, I'm going to ask this as a question, why does it say Ivelis Adam as opposed to Evil, mm. right? So this, to me, implies that this is about all people and their inner Ivelis, not necessarily the person who is like, you know, uh, typified as an Evil. So is this, is this defining what Ivelis is? Like maybe, I mean, I don't know, because the, 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 the I, I think it's safe to assume that this is a general quality of the but I don't know if it's defining it because it is giving one symptom of it or one manifestation of it. So uh, maybe the first half is defining it, but yeah. Yeah, but then, then you run into Isaac's problem, which is, so let's just ask that, translate Isaac's thing into a question. What does it mean that Ivelis Adam uh, to Salaf Darko, right? Um, right. Uh, so I guess the question is, what is Siluf? What is Darko? Yeah. Also, who who exactly is raging against God? I guess kind of like is it the Avelis? That oh, that's a good question. Avelis? I mean, I I think it's the it's the Adam, the Adam, the Adam who is seized by the Avelis. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think those are our questions, right? <laughs> I mean, it's it is pretty general. Yeah. What is Evelis? Oh yes, what is Evelis, of course. Yeah, what is Evelis? Yeah, and as much as it would be nice to think that the English word evil comes from uh, Evil or Evelis, it's, I don't think that's the case, yeah. Yeah, it is interesting that the, um, I know the Malbim's theory, it is a weird word, Evelis. The Malbim's theory, and this is in line with his specific technical definition of Evil, which is not like ours. He says it comes from the same word as Ulai, hmm. which is interesting. Because it's the same letters, right? Aleph, yeah. Vav, Lamed, which is just a weird combination of letters, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, the, the sense I'm getting is that um, a person's get, like, just on, on a very, like, cursory level. Like, yeah. A person, like, does something that, like, like they, they mess up in terms of their own actions, and that brings bad consequences on them. Yeah. Then, they get mad at like the situation because they don't recognize that they're the cause of the, the problem. Right. I, I get that vibe also. And um, I guess there's where your question is very pointed, which is why are they getting mad at God? Right. You know, or what does that mean? Because you're saying he, they're getting mad at the situation. Um, so is it that or is it specifically like they formulate it as uh, as you know as God afflicting them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, let's just take that and think about it and see what we can get from that uh, at first, is that why uh, doesn't he, I don't know about why doesn't he, but let's just understand the phenomenon of him not getting, not realizing that this stems from his own actions. And in fact, actually what I want to do is um, I I think this is a 
I don't know if this is premature to bring this in, but um, uh, the Ralbag on uh, on Eov, which I happen to have an English translation of, which is fantastic, because you know you've now heard enough Ralbag that his Hebrew is very difficult, and so especially on metaphysical topics like this. And I believe this was his first commentary, his first biblical commentary. So that's why he refers to it in his other works a lot. So he gives a really good um, example of this, and I think it'd be good if we read this. And and again, I. I don't know if this is premature. Technically, he's not uh, he's not commenting on our pasuk. He's commenting on a pasuk in Eo 5.2. So Eo 5.2 says, um, hold on here. Ki uh, le'evil yaharag ka'ash upose tamis kina. Okay, forget translating uh, Eo if it's impossible. Uh, how would we translate this? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, so, oh, he, he says, okay, so this commentary, I'm just gonna read it from here, even though it's, uh, I'm not gonna bother to find it in uh, on all Torah. It says, uh, thus he says, for vexation killeth the foolish man. So that's the first part of that puzzle. Inasmuch as he is constantly vexed when that which he is seeking does not come, when in reality, he alone is the cause that prevents the frustration of his expectations because he does not use the proper methods in trying to achieve his ends. Uh, it is obvious that such a man is constantly vexed when he does not attain what he aimed at, he, and he therefore thinks that this is due to punishment from God, but it is also evident that such a thing cannot be classified as evil, uh, and this is my favorite example, just as you cannot call evil the failure of producing a ship by digging in the ground. <laughs> since a ship cannot be produced through such an agency. <laughs> okay. Um, consequently, the, uh, oh, so, so pausing there for a second. So I love that example because if you, you get this guy who is like, uh, I picture this guy digging up his entire backyard, right? And he's like clearly angry. And you ask him like, like what are you so angry about? He's like, I'm trying to get a yacht, you know, and uh, and all I'm doing is working, and it's not coming to fruition, and I'm not getting a yacht. Now my my yard is all uh, dug up, and like, you know, so th that that's the, uh, and then he blames it on God. He says right. God is punishing me. Also, Rabba, again, I, I don't know. That's a great not, analogy. It is a great analogy, right? <laughs> um, so it's not only the. Uh, Rabag is not commenting on our pasuk in Mishlei, right? But he is. So it, you know, it, it, it's uh, I don't I don't want to automatically equate the two, but he's saying he views it as a punishment from God, which is one avenue of getting mad at God. You know, I mean, I was thinking getting mad at God of like just blaming God for like, why is God doing this to me? Not even necessarily as a punishment, like just, you know, I don't even know what, I mean, I guess that's another question we can add here, which is, um, uh, I'll just append this to the first question. What form of anger at God does uh, do, uh, does this fool's anger take? In other words, how does he conceive of of what's happening vis-a-vis -vis him and God? I know it's a very general question, but like, you know, like, so Robog's giving one uh, example of that, right. that God's punishing me. Yeah. So that, and that's also, Robog is giving a specific um uh quality of the, of the avil uh th that he is the avil is using uh, this part i actually do want to look it up in hebrew just to see what terms he uses here um it's just a really long commentary let me just do a search here uh, how do you say ship in hebrew Hania. Uh, okay that's that's one word but that's not here what's another word for ship um, <laughs> oh, man. or hofer no Sfina, yeah, that's probably it. Oh, here we go, I found it. Yeah, Sfina, that's what he uses. Good, nice, nice. Um, yeah, he says uh, in Hebrew, uh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Kihu yidag tamid, he's constantly vexed, is how the English said it. Kasher lo yavou mivu kashav, asher hu sibas heder boan. So he is constantly vexed when what he's seeking does not come to fruition. Sorry, uh, when he doesn't get what he was looking for. Uh, see how hard the Hebrew is. Um, and the reason why they don't come is because he doesn't um, uh, he doesn't use the sibos haruyos, the proper causes. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that is I don't know if again if he's defining a uh, uh, what it means the evelus adam, but that's definitely his. Um, uh, what's causing him the, the trouble here. Mm. Yeah. And that's, I guess I was also saying to Salaf Darko, 
right? right. That his derech here is his plan to get a certain good. Mm -hmm. And to salif means that he's like not engaging in the proper means to get that end. Oh, I see. And maybe it's because it seems like he's like relating to God as like God's like, you know, intervening in every instance of his life. Yeah. And like, you know, either giving him good or giving him bad. And it's yeah. kind of like his actions don't play any role in terms of what happens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, uh, uh, I mean, it's it, it, it's almost uh, contradictory in in that he is treating himself as an active party and a passive party in a sense of like God is messing with me, but I'm trying to do something, but God's messing with me. Well, then if you're trying to do something, then at least raise the question. Maybe this is because of you that this is happening. You know, yeah. Um, but then the the Rabag does go on. Again, uh, <laughs> this is not our usual track. I think because because this is such a general pause. Like, I, I know we don't usually go to the Mepharshim so quickly. And I, I guess I kind of slipped into it because I'm technically not using one of the Mepharshim on Mishle. But he goes on and he says, I'm just going to continue in the English here because it's easier. Consequently, the foolish man whose heart persuades him to chase all kinds of imaginary fortunes is killed by jealousy. Were you asking about jealousy earlier last week, two weeks ago? Wow, thanks. And I quoted that anecdote about the guy poking out his eye. No, that sounds really interesting though. <laughs> Who's asking about that? Okay, I thought- um, I Oh. It was um, Joe who was asking you about Joe, that. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you sent it to the, to the, the WhatsApp. chat. Ah. Yeah, yeah, okay, that, that was it, yeah, yeah. Um, consequently, the foolish man whose heart persuades him to chase all kinds of imaginary fortunes is killed by jealousy for his eye. I, I just, because I saw the word jealousy and eye, and I thought of the jealousy and eye thing. <laughs> for his eye is not satisfied, and he remains always with that envy and pain. All right, so that's a different uh, thing as well. Is he saying that he's basically uh, chasing imaginary fortunes, which in the Hebrew, okay, see, this is better in Hebrew, hmm. so imaginary successes, right? right? And uh, that contrasts very well with the Rob Boggs definition of Torah as the uh, bring you to true success, but then there are the imaginary successes. And then he goes on, uh, moreover, on account of his great envy, he endeavors to acquire things he desires by hasty methods, thus using improper means to achieve them. Okay, so that's like a combo of both of them. So on the one hand, in general, he pursues things not using the proper means. And he is looking for stuff that is rooted in imagination and fantasy. And when he tries pursuing those things through improper means, then he, of course he's going to be vexed because he's he's not going to get, he's chasing a fantasy and he's not even using the right means to get <laughs> to chase a fantasy. Like at least the guy who, let's say, take the guy, for example, who's trying to get a yacht, who um, is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, who is using the correct means, right. but it's an imaginary fantasy that somehow if I, have, if I have a yacht, then that's going to make my life better, you know? So like, he won't get frustrated in the pursuit of it. He'll just get frustrated. He won't get frustrated in a Mishleic way. He'll get frustrated in a Kohelis way, yeah. right? That he, it's not going to make him happy in the way that he thought, mm -hmm. you know? But this guy, this Avil is, is caught in the, the worst of, of, of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, well, even, would you call him an Avil, even if he like had the correct aim, but he just used bad methods? Yeah, like the correct he, aim and used bad methods. Like he didn't want the yacht, he wants like his-, his Yeah, his, I would his, still call him an Avil, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, like I, I think that, and, and this is just my understanding of an Avil, is that that's really what defines the Avil, is that he is, so my, since we're talking general definitions here, so my working definition of avil, uh, avil is the most um, generic type of Mishlaic fool, which is someone who is taken in by, um, who who acts based on short-term phenomena and surface-level perceptions, you know, impressions, as the Stoics would say, um, and uh, and so he is going to make poor decisions, even in things that like, you know, getting food and making a basic living, uh, and he's going to engage in the wrong means because he's going to be always trying to take the the easy way out or chasing the, like e either the easy way out in terms of laziness, like trying to avoid immediate conflict or the, uh, or, or falling prey to the immediate, the bait of immediate pleasure, you know, of Taiva. Uh, that's like the, that's the avil. So I think he will use these wrong means. And it's interesting because it's, it's using the wrong means this is one question that is an open question to me, which is, um, I, I shouldn't say open, but like I, I have fluctuated on this a little bit. Can the Avil be intelligent? Mm. You know, um, meaning 
to me, my understanding of it is that the reason why the Evil uh, falls prey to these things is not that he doesn't understand how to do stuff, but just that he doesn't uh, exercise self-control to see past the immediate, you know? So it might be that he knows how to do stuff and he's very capable intellectually, but he falls prey to the immediate and that's what causes his problems, you know? Um, and I, I, I like, I say that because let's say for example, like the Na'ar in Mishle is lacking knowledge. Right. Uh, and we know that because Shlomo says that the purpose of the book is let's say, uh, Lenar, uh, Da'as Mazima, is to give him knowledge. So it seems like he's plain shot is he's lacking knowledge. And then the Ksil in Mishle, who's the, uh, the fool that's closer to the Russia, um, Rabinu Yona holds very clearly that the Ksil is not lacking in intelligence necessarily. Um, and, uh, and so, so I just, Evil though, I can see going both ways. Um, yeah. Then he goes on and he says, um, and it happens. Oh, and by the way, and this also, I think, works out for our Pasuk of Ivelas Adam, that every person certainly has the quality of falling prey to the immediate uh, in some measure, because that's part of human nature. Meaning not all Mishlaic personalities are as built into just the very basic meaning of what it means to be a human. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is like, like Tadi says, like Taiva and Atlus, like, have yeah, immediate pleasure and warning immediate pain. That's like the basic right. form of, of folly, you know? Mm. Yeah. Well, can you like, uh, can you, wouldn't everyone have a certain like aspect of like being a nar in some area, like where you are lacking? You're not. Yeah, you're not and but that that, that's for a different reason though. That's because the the starting point is a nar mm. in your life. You know, um, like like you, you're everyone's born as a, a nar, you know, uh, and so you grow out of it. So there, it's there, not because it's like built into the psyche, but because it's like the circumstantial starting point. You know, okay. so yeah, you're you're right, but uh, yeah. And the other thing also is that like that's why also there's no uh, naarus uh, as a noun right. or like narishkeit as they say in uh, Yiddish, I guess. <laughs> right? Um, it's not a it's not depicted as a quality. It's really depicted more of a life circumstance, right. whereas Ivelis is a, a noun, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, because you're right. Nar is also like a lack of something. Yeah. So yeah. Really right. Um, okay. So then he goes on. Rabba goes on, and Yovan says, uh, "And it, if it happens, actually, I'm going to read now that we've read the English. I'm going to read this in Hebrew just to see if we could get better, um, more nuanced uh, understanding here." So. Um, da, 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 da. Um, okay, I'm just going to read what I read before. So you can't produce a ship by this action. And this man who was tricked or who was seduced, whose heart seduced him, uh, to all imaginary successes, to me, Sehu Kinaso, his jealousy will kill him. That's very Kohalasi. His eye will not be satisfied. Uh, and he will be constantly in this state of jealousy and pain. Um, in addition to the fact that he strives in the, uh, the, the, in the magnitude of his jealousy to reach what he's looking for, Bimhiros, quickly, which relates to our previous Pasuk, mm. right? Someone who's quick on his feet is a uh, sinner. Right. I don't remember what we said, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Right. But I bet people, I bet Mepharshim joined the Tupso him. Uh, and he 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 uh, guides himself in this endeavor through the improper means. Okay, I'm gonna read this in Hebrew now. Uh, and if it happens that such a that a fool takes root and prospers in some things, yet his downfall is sure to come suddenly. For I saw him in his fall, and I've cursed his, his habitation because of the little that remained of his property for the acquisition of which he strove. So in other words, if he does get lucky, you know, it's not going to last right. because of these very same things. Is He's not going to be happy with it because his fantasy, you know, uh, drives are going to make him seek more than what it actually has, you know, and he'll be jealous with the other guy or it's not going to be enough. And he's going to uh, mess it up probably in, in, in like, let's say he has a fortune, he's going to squander it because of his uh, foolish uh, decision-making, you know? Uh, to such a man, nothing of value comes except by accident. <laughs> and that which is by accident is insignificant. Uh, and then he quotes here. I don't know if this is a quote from Eo, but this is in quotation marks. Behold, then his children that follow him are very far, are far from safety and hold, sorry, and 
they are crushed in the, in the gate and in, in the presence of all the people and there's no one to deliver them. For such a man does not endeavor to acquire friends, even as he does not put forth efforts in other causes which would bring him to that which he longs for. And thus it often happens that evil befalls the fool and his children who follow his example to such a degree that their, su that their su substance is taken away by men of hard luck, namely by hung the hungry man who will eat up his harvest and also by one who takes his harvest from the midst uh, of thorns and who because of his ill fortune is himself in fear for this me his meager portion, lest the law, law lest the lawless man should take away from him. This is the extreme evil which befalls the fool and the sons, that even the lowest among men will oppress them. Yeah. So he's they're not taking guard to protect their fortune and everything against other stuff. And then he goes into the actual particulars of Eov. But yeah, that's a pretty good uh pretty good diagnosis <laughs> of the fool. Yeah. Um yeah, so what do we get? Let's go back to our Pasuk now. Uh so Evelis on to solve Darko. So we're saying that that potentially what this means, and I'm saying potentially because I don't know if it's one of the qualities that Rodbog mentions or all of them, but the candidates are pursuing the wrong ends, using the wrong means or both, you know? And I, I'm right now comfortable saying that it means both because that's the entire Derek. You know, Derek is what where you're going and how you're getting there. Right. That's what I would say a Derek is. Right. And also, I mean. It's funny because you could also say that the Ohelis mistake is also a mistake in the means in a different way. Because like everyone really is trying to get happiness, sort of. Like that's the end, I guess. Yeah. Or, or whatever. But is, there, is that a mistake in the ends though? Well, no, that well, if you I'm just maybe right. I misunderstood your first point. So oh, what do you no, mean I by it's that. also well everyone is trying to get satisfaction, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then if you think that, oh, this Yisron or whatever is going to get you satisfaction, that's a mistake in the means of getting satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. I see. Uh, it's also a mistake in the means, sort of. <laughs> I so I, I mean, what, I'm, what I'm struggling to grasp, is that different than, than the typical Mishlaic mistake? Uh, yeah. So explain to me more time. Let me try guess, again. Yeah, yeah the, the Mishlaic mistake, at least my understanding, is like that you make a practical error. Like yeah. You want to get, you know, uh, whatever. I don't know. You want to make money and you yeah. squander it. You don't yeah. make money. But so the Kohelis mistake is you want to get satisfaction and you just take the wrong approach. Uh -huh. So it still is a mistake in the means, even though it's I see. a Kohelis mistake instead of a Mishlaic mistake. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so let's divide that up then. I just wanted to be able to differentiate it clearly here. So the, the what we're calling a Kohelis mistake is the ultimate good that you're pursuing and thinking that that's going to make you happy. Uh -huh. So yeah. being wealthy, being liked, all this other stuff, right? Uh -huh. um, then the Mishlaic mistake that we're talking about is employing the wrong means to achieve the end. Right. And then this mistake that you're talking about, which is a Kohelis means mistake, <laughs> is well no i'm saying i'm saying the kohelis mistake is really ultimately a mistake in the means also because your ends is not wrong in that you want satisfaction let's say but i think it's just that you want you think that so yeah is give you i i guess I'm calling that a mistake in the ends yeah, okay. because because i think the uh again if you go with not that this is the definition of happiness but the uh you know the i, I think i quoted this in an earlier kohelishi of aristotle saying that happiness is uh is the end that all actions something something <laughs> <laughs> he said it more eloquently than i did you know i mean like happiness is just that placeholder term for for the thing, the, the thing that you're striving for you know uh but the hatzlachas hamadumos you know the imaginary successes i think are calling i'm calling ends yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I hear the point you're making though yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that's the Tesalat Darko. Uh, and I also want to point out, by the way, that Shatyusa, which is the, what the Targum says, which is with Shota, I'm pretty sure that that literally means deviation, right? Like a Shota is someone who is a, uh, deviating from the means, or like um, a, 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 a hadas shote, uh -huh. right? right? Is uh, its leaves are not parallel, and then I believe also, and this is a little bit more speculative, but the, uh, you know, I was I just gave here last week in Eov on the Satan, and the Satan is from sin tet he, which the Ram says means to deviate. So I don't think it's a far stretch to say that sin tet he and shin tet he 
are related yeah. linguistically, etymologically, you know. Right. Um, so, uh, so again, I, I know that the, the the Hebrew doesn't use that for Ivelis, but it is interesting that the Aramaic or the Hebrew close equivalent uh, is related to the to Salak Darko thing that he's like deviating from the from right. uh, his path. It is interesting, by the way, that Shote is not one of the Mishnaic fools. Right. I don't know if, if that word is a Mishnaic Hebrew word that just didn't yeah. show up in. Uh, I don't even know if that word shows up in Tanakh. Right. But it's definitely not one of his things. Yeah. Okay. So now the question is uh, is the second half. Al Hashem Yizaf Libo, right? Is uh, his heart raging at Hashem? Right. So I, I feel like whatever you say that is the the like whatever and whatever form it takes. He's certainly like you said initially. He's certainly not looking at his own agency as bringing about this result. Right. So the question is why not? I mean, on a basic level, why not? He thought that this would work, right? We're like he did a thing that he thought would work and he didn't get it. Yeah, right, so it's not his fault. So it's not his fault, right. And, uh, and the premise that he's not questioning is maybe I didn't do it right, you know, like, um, you know, maybe, uh, but, but given his premise that I'm doing everything right, the right way, yeah. And then the other candidate for this, I think, or at least one other candidate, and if not B, is, um, uh, is that he feels a certain sense of entitlement to the result. Uh, uh -huh. And therefore, when he doesn't get it, then he feels deprived as opposed to just he didn't engage in it in the right way, you know? Like I, so in other words, in our example, it's either I thought that yachts could be gotten by digging hmm. or regardless of that, I'm entitled to a yacht and I didn't get it, right. you know? Like, I think those are the, like two possibilities for why he's upset at someone other than himself. Mm -hmm. right. It's just like weird that like, if you do, like if you do it, if you go a certain way towards a certain end, yeah. like you're digging in the, in, the, in the dirt to get a yacht and then it doesn't work. Like, doesn't that just show that that's not how you get a yacht? <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, that's the, uh, the I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I posted a, a video on, on Facebook. Uh, this was on Friday, I think, or no, Thursday morning of um, the car parked right outside of my apartment just for maybe like 10 minutes just spinning its wheels, just trying to like, you know, like go like, like get out of its parking spot and, and slipping on the ice. And like there were these three bystanders just standing there like watching the entire time. And uh, and it reminded me of that quote they attribute to Einstein of like insanity is doing the same thing again and again and, and expecting different results, right. you know? Right. Um, so I feel like that's relevant here, <laughs> you know? Right. Like, uh, like and, and people made this mistake uh, in, uh, in many areas like the, um, do you, do you ever, this is before your time, you ever watch Arrested Development? Some of it. Some of it, okay, fine. So, I mean, one of the best, like, Mishlaic lines to emerge from that is yeah. you have, you know, Lindsay and Tobias, uh, whose marriage is not working. Tobias is, a, is actually like a, uh, uh, like a, a psychologist or something like that, you know? And so they consider, they consider going, uh, entering into an open, an open marriage, you know, and like dating other people, you know? So then Lindsay says, um, uh, does do open marriages ever work? Like, do they ever like solve your uh, your relationship difficulties? And Tobias says, he says, you know, no, my, my, you know, many of my clients have tried this before, and they somehow delude themselves into thinking that it's going to work. But maybe it'll work for us, <laughs> you know. Uh, and like, and so that, that's the other reason why, or maybe not the other reason. Maybe that's the primary reason why the fool will try many many things and uh, or the, the same thing many many times, uh, and uh, and think it's going to work. Because he, he's an exception, like you know. That's good. Yeah. Huh. Right. Do you think it? Like, I guess maybe he feels like he's an exception because he has like some relationship with God. So th this is this is kind of where I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, 
a Pusuk like this, especially because it invokes God, even if it didn't invoke God, even if it was just a, a general Pusuk about the Evil, but certainly that it invokes God, it's hard to know from a methodological standpoint, how much we have to go into the fool's mind mm -hmm. to understand this. Like I, I, mentioned, I think I mentioned this in the past, but the mistake I used to make in Mishle, not the mistake, because it's not always a mistake, but the tendency I used to have that Rabbi Moskowitz used to always have to correct me on was I would go into psychologizing everything. Mm -hmm. And Rabbi Moskowitz would always draw me into fo focus on the actions that the fool does and the Chacham does. But with something like this, it's, it seems like it's hard to not go into the psychology because it is talking about a psychological phenomenon. He gets angry at God, right. you know? But now the question though is once you go into psychology, how far do you go and how speculative is this, you know? Um, like we are being granted to say that, that he, uh, we're being granted the license and the leeway by the puzzle to say that he, clearly the fool has some sort of conception about what his relationship with God is. Mm -hmm. right. But the question is like, how primary is that in his entire worldview, you know? Yeah. I guess, right, could, there, could it have structured it any other way without, like, to teach you this idea about that he, like, you know, feels deserving of this thing without mentioning Yeah, that? I feel like it could have said either, like, the, um, it could have put it in terms of anger. Right. He just gets angry. Um, or if you want to make it less, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, intense, like the Targum does, he complains, mm -hmm. you know, Um and it wouldn't have to bring God into the picture. Yeah. You know, the other thing also, the other way that he could get angry at God is it might not have to do with a personal relationship. It might be a um, uh, getting angry at God for making the world this way. You know, now that's a higher level because then that, that like uh, um, requires some awareness of the fact that there is, a, a, there is an objective reality that is this way that, that he doesn't like, you know, <laughs> and, but, but like, I feel like I see this in fools also, like, let me think of an example here. Like, let's say like, like, for example, let's say people who, who want to lose weight without changing their eating habits and without exercising, you know, and then they get angry when it doesn't work, you know, and, and their anger is like, why does it have to be this hard? You know, that I feel like that's also a kind of anger against God, you know, which is not like personal. It's not religious in terms of like God's punishing me. That's why this question of like what the what is the form or nature of his anger at God it is a very central question to this puzzle. Yeah. Without many clues in the puzzle. <laughs> right. See now now I'm wondering, and this is just uh, uh, intuition. Is there something we can get from the word, use of the word all? I was just thinking. Yeah. Because yeah. it is a weird word. Mm -hmm. I think it's a weird word. I don't even know. Maybe it's right. a normal thing. Uh, Yisaf all something, you know? Right. Maybe taking Isaac's approach, like if someone mentions God. Yeah. <laughs> all Hashem Yisaf Libo. God is a sore topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You know, and the other the other question here is like I understand in say for Eov or Tehillim, mm -hmm. the anger at God would be part of the subject of the book, of like you know working out your relationship with God and and how God relates to us. In Mishlei, that's not really, it's not as broad, you know. So like like the question is is even when they're invoking God and talking about his relationship with God or his view of God, it has to be brought down into a Mishleic. Um, uh, upshot and the question is what does that look like what type of upshot is there in terms of, of that right well what's the point of mentioning that? like if you if it was just about being angry at the situation yeah you could get a mishleic idea of that you don't need to yeah Another thing, by the way, that's just swimming around in my head, uh, and I, this is extraneous, so we don't have to like answer this question. But you know, the first the first possible in Mishle, the first real possible one seven is um, uh, uh, Yiras Hashem Reishis to us. Mm -hmm. Um, so fear of Hashem is the beginning of knowledge. Chachma umusar evilim bazu, and and evilim degrade or despise chachma and musar. So there, even though the puzzle brings in Hashem, then it, the 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 fools are not being depicted. The evilim in that puzzle are not being depicted as as being directing venting their anger at God. It's at chachma and musar, you know, mm -hmm. which at the very like 
you can say that Chachma and Musa in that Pasuk are synonymous with Yiras Hashem, but either way, it's not at God himself. It's right. at, you know, the, the lifestyle that God uh, approves of or whatever, you know. So here it could be, it could be the system that God puts. It could be, yeah, right. yeah, and then and then then we have to ask the question: uh, What is the uh, anger uh, yeah. at that system? Yeah, yeah. Is there of these possibilities we're mentioning for the second half? Are there any that are closer to the way we've been learning the first half? Because I think the entitlement thing is not close. I think it's. I think it's a, 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 a tighter relationship to say he's angry that the world works like this, mm -hmm. you know, that he's employing the right, he's employing what he thinks are the right means towards the right end and he's not getting anything. Right. He's not getting anything for it. So he's angry that his view of how it should work is not working. Isn't that an entitlement for things to work a certain way? Yeah, I, I guess something something bothered me about the entitlement. In other words, I, I think because part of the idea of entitlement is he is special, and I don't see that showing up here necessarily. No. Maybe it's the the latent premise that he assumes he's special, but I don't think that's like in his anger, you know. Like 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 here's an example also, which is kind of like the yacht. <laughs> you know, someone goes to Las Vegas, and they put all their money just into the slot machines, right? Just right. and then they don't win and they get angry, right. you know, and uh, and so like that's just not the way slot machines work. You know, it's not like you put it in and you automatically win, you know? Yeah. And so that, that, that's, so the, the, and the reason why I'm using that example is there is an underlying feeling of entitlement, but like, that's not how he's consciously experiencing this. It's not like he's saying like all those other slot machine players, like, like they don't deserve to win, but I deserve to win. Like that might be what's going on, but that's not, you know, right. he experiences it as this should have worked, you know? So I guess just methodologically in terms of initially, like that would be the line where like, you know, then it just goes into psychology speculating instead of keeping- I think so. Out. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's clearly being angry at the fact that his Derek didn't work and so, he thinks his Derek is right. Uh -huh. So you can figure out the causes of that, but that's different. Yeah. I think that's a different question. And again, the only thing that's making me hesitate about that is like, do you need to go into the causes to understand his anger at God? But yeah, right now I think the most conservative interpretation of it is that that's what it means he gets angry at God, is he gets angry at the way that God set up a world that doesn't work the way his uh, his approaches have uh, in line with his approaches, you know, right. and he's just not questioning that his approaches might be wrong. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's just such a you know, <laughs> this really highlights the why being in a veal is not good because you're not getting what you want. You're being frustrated by the fact you can't get what you want. And then you're in a state of anger. I mean, maybe those are all the same thing, but like, like you know, it's just a constant, and you can't get out. Yeah. And that not getting out is gonna cause other mistakes. Like, let's say like the person who tries something out, doesn't work and you try something else and try something else. If you try that approach, even if it's not guided by Chachma, then at least you're not gonna make the same mistake twice. Right. You know, and there's a chance that you're gonna get out. But, uh, and then, it, and like the robot says, if he does succeed, he loses it because he can't, he's not operating in a way that's conducive to maintaining the successes he gets. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If he actually achieves his goal. Yeah. yeah. And if he get, if he achieves his goal, like the robot says, it'll be by accident. And so that's going to make it worse because he's going to think that what he did works, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. 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 It's just not a good, not a happy life. No. Yeah. So I think what we should do is, uh, I think this is a non-traditional but good exp first exploration of the Pasuk, even though we use Mepharshim, but I think tomorrow we, let's go into the Mepharshim and see what they say, because I, I feel like they're going to say a lot. And in addition to doing the Mepharshim on Mishle, I might want to do where the Rambam brings this up, because uh, it's good, and I'm teaching it this week in Eov, yep. uh, or this week or next week. So yeah. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. All righty. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you see this? Yeah.